Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 21st, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. I think it's been a little while since I said that, and that is because we have had some pretty heavy duty transits and it didn't really feel right saying that phrase, but a week like this, oh my goodness, is it ever amazing and phenomenal. There are big astrological moves taking place in the sky, and I'm not promising you easy breezy. In fact, as we get to the end of the week, we're gonna start to feel the energy of Jupiter and Pluto building, which technically will perfect next week. And I'll talk all about that when we get there. However, there are things changing now. There is movement taking place that can redefine us, that can bring clarity, that can bring purpose now and for a long time to come. And it starts right out of the gate. We are going to have a solar eclipse on the solstice point. This is zero degrees of the sign of Cancer. And what a solar eclipse is, is a new moon, but I like to call it a jacked up new moon. What that means is a more powerful energy than we would normally have. And new moons bring new beginnings. A solar eclipse brings with it a surprise quality that much more. It heightens the sense of newness. And given where this eclipse is taking place at zero degrees, at the very beginning of the sign of Cancer, it emphasizes that sense of fresh new starts and seed moments that much more. But Mercury is retrograde in this part of the sky, which means in some key way, we are also going back over old ground. And Cancer, of course, is the sign of our understanding of family, of country, of where we come from, of patriotism. And it also has to do with our understanding of our ancestors. It is home in a literal sense, but it is also feeling at home within ourselves, in our own skin. And it has to do with knowing that we can provide a sense of security within ourselves. And that makes it that much more likely that we're able to go out in the world from that place of connection. Well, the thing is that it isn't just about this solar eclipse. Yes, in many ways, all of us will be redefining home differently and in surprising ways, understanding where we come from in ways that perhaps we hadn't considered and knowing our feelings more deeply. But it is a beginning, but also a reflection, given that Mercury is retrograde, inviting us to reflect, re-examine, our definition to make sure that it takes into account the entire human family as much as possible. But it is going to be next month. And that is when we are going to have a rare second new moon in the same sign, in the sign of Cancer. The difference will be that that new moon will happen at the very end of its respective sign in what astrologers call an anorectic degree. And what this does is it sets up a series of new moons that are going to take us right towards the late part of the year where the following new moons that take place every about a month apart, about 28 and a half days apart, every new moon going forward from there is going to be at what we call an anorectic degree. It's going to be at the very end of its respective sign. And it is the anorectic degrees that represent culmination that much more. Some call them crisis points, but I like to call them concentration points, which means that they heighten the energy of the sign that they are in. They ask us to pay attention that much more to truly manifest as part of the new beginnings that new moons come with. Now it is going to be that new moon that happens next month that is going to represent an important culmination moment, a closure that comes along with the brand new beginning. And we will experience this certainly as a collective, but more personally as well. And that is because on a more personal level, it is now that the surprise factor, that sense of a fresh idea of a new beginning is high but it is going to be next month where we're able to embody it and live it that much more. Now that new moon is quite intense. It has a certain intensity to it, not only because of where it's taking place at an anorectic degree, but by then 
it is going to be Saturn that is back in the sign of Capricorn across the sky from that new moon. So we have got so much that is still to come as part of an important energy that is going to shift and set the stage for a profound decade. I have been saying to you that when we get to the end of this decade, the world is going to look very different and be very different than it is as we start this decade in a myriad of ways. The energies are going to shift our priorities, our world priorities, the priorities that we have as societies, the technologies that we engage in, the way that we understand power and who has it. All of it right now is in flux as part of what is shifting on a grander scale. And it is this last eclipse happening now, the last eclipse happening in the sign of Cancer after a series of eclipses in the sign of Cancer that have been taking place for two years that in many ways it will be as if we have laid the foundation. Cancer is an energy of foundation. We have laid the groundwork, if you will, from which something different, something new, defined by a new understanding can be found. Now, it is gonna be right around Tuesday that we are going to have Neptune going retrograde. And when Neptune goes retrograde, it tends to heighten a sense of uncertainty, sometimes confusion as well. All may not be as it seems. Remember, any time a planet changes directions, it is that much closer to the Earth. Its symbolism and its energy is that much more heightened for us. Now, Neptune can be very dreamy, very hopeful, but going retrograde, that energy doesn't always know how to be carried forward into the world, and it doesn't really know yet how to be further integrated into the soul like a retrograde planet invites us to do. It's appearing to stand still in the sky. And so it's important for us as a collective to keep in mind that illusions are gonna be very high what it is that is being presented to us may not necessarily be a grounded perspective. It is that solar eclipse that very quickly is going to invite us to root our understanding, our truth in emotion, but also to find the foundation and find the commonality. Now, Neptune is God of the seas. Think about the sea, it is in constant flux and there's a lot of mystery to it as well. In modern astrological terms, uh, many astrologers like to look at Neptune when we consider things like viruses in particular. And so my hope is with Neptune standing still in the sky, it represents a moment of uh, culmination where my hope is that this may represent a peak, if you will, of COVID-19. And as Neptune goes retrograde, uh, this energy starts to calm down that much more. Doesn't need to necessarily be something that's going out into the world like a direct planet likes to do, uh, but rather can be something that starts to feel like it is diminishing. I think that this is very likely further affirmed by the fact that it is going to be July 1st that Saturn is going to retrograde out of the sign of Aquarius. Think about what happened when um, Saturn moved into Aquarius. It was like this immediate, almost sudden sense of social restriction. And Saturn can be a principle of restriction and limitation. And so at least for now, as Saturn retrogrades out, for the next few months from the sign of Aquarius, as Neptune goes retrograde as well, calming down its energies. Astrologers also consider a retrograde planet slowing down as well. My hope is that this helps us as we navigate further into the summer and beyond uh, to feel a sense of greater stability, at least where it comes to our ability to engage with each other more fully and our sense of also feeling safe in the process. Now, it will be on Thursday that Venus goes direct. That is very big news. Venus going direct after being retrograde since the middle of May uh, brings a larger six-week cycle to a close. And this is Venus returning to where she was way back on April 
10th. So it was right around April 10th that Venus entered shadow. And so Venus, this whole week, is essentially hanging out where she was when she first entered shadow. In some way, what happens now is going to give us another look, a burst of clarity, of insight, grounded in heart that ultimately helps us to understand the events of the mid part of April differently. And all of us in deeply personal ways may very well be doing this. At the same time, as a collective, of course, it is uh, Venus that is in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini has to do with communication. It has to do with the media as well. And what we are talking about is uh, ruled by Gemini and by Mercury as well as ruler of Gemini. Now remember, as I said earlier, Mercury is still retrograde and retrograde in the sign of cancer, inviting us to dig really deep, get to the root of ourselves and the root causes. And then you add to this the fact that Venus has been dancing with Neptune in this perpetual square, heightening a sense of confusion and uncertainty at this time. Now, even though these planets have eased their square somewhat, it is going to be in the middle of July that they perfect their square for the third and final time as part of the larger Venus retrograde season. Just know that both of these planets standing still, changing directions, with Neptune going retrograde and Venus going direct, well, it does suggest that, that very sense of, on the one hand, knowing our answers and ready to be clear and getting insight. As much as that energy is there, we also have the energy of hope and uncertainty and confusion heightened at this time as well. Now, this may very well play out in matters of heart for a lot of people out there. And I know that we would prefer more stable understandings, but where it is that we are willing to root ourselves in heart, I truly do believe that we can't make a wrong choice. It is going to be at the very end of the week that Mars is going to change signs. Now, normally Mars spends about seven weeks per sign every two years or so, but this time is different. This time, Mars is going to spend about seven months in the sign of Aries. And that, of course, is because later on this year, we are going to have Mars retrograde season. Now, we're not there yet. So keep that in mind, but for now and for this moment, the power is in understanding that we are shifting what motivates us, what drives us, where it is that we are pouring our own sense of courage and motivation and how it is that we're understanding power in more personal terms is going to be highlighted at this time. Aries is the sign of personal power, personal agency. It is going to be at the very end of this week that Mars is going to connect with Saturn in harmony. This is a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. It is what we call an easy connection. However, it is one that also empowers us. The very nature of these two planets in a modern Western perspective is empowerment in their own way. Mars encourages us to know ourselves, to root ourselves in self-knowledge and act with courage and single-minded focus from that place. Saturn encourages a more mature approach and appreciation of consequences and taking on responsibility as part of moving towards self-respect. I actually think when I look at Saturn, Saturn as ruler of Aquarius says that freedom comes through responsibility, not from responsibility. And this very energy invites us to engage in the principle of freedom differently, to own it from a more mature and grounded perspective in a way that ultimately allows us to experience tangible gains with an eye towards the outcomes, the consequences, and what we are manifesting. It is from that place that we're able to use our own energy with that much more wisdom. And in this way, it is Saturn that speaks to wisdom as well. Interestingly, uh, the Renaissance astrologer Marcello Ficino, uh, he spoke of Saturn as what he called the Christ principle. And what he meant by that was that 
faith without works is dead. And he invited us to consider, and when we consider the chart from a spiritual or more mystical perspective, to understand that Saturn asks us to take ownership and to take action. Saturn needs something to do, that's the thing. And if you engage Saturn actively, then his energies can be a blessing. That was what Ficino believed and what he taught. So now for us today, we look at the potential here for us to own our power and to understand how it is that it can make our lives better in real ways and practical ways. It can align us with greater success. And in so doing, it also aligns us with greater freedom collectively, as Aquarius likes to think, and personally as well as the sign of Aries indicates. But what's also special about this energy and bringing this back full circle, as I was started out by touching on uh, Saturn and I told you I was going to come back to that, it was way back in the middle of March that Saturn entered the sign of Aquarius. And it was at zero degrees of Aquarius at the very end of March that Mars met Saturn in the sky. And this is important for a few reasons. On the one hand, it accelerated our understanding of um, this whole new cycle that we were stepping into of social distancing, for example. This zero degrees of Aquarius is incredibly important. For one reason, what's happening now. This is Mars having moved on from meeting Saturn in the sky, making its first major aspect to Saturn, which is a harmonious aspect at that. It's gonna allow us to feel like we are bringing forward what began way back at the end of March. And so this is going to be practical. It's going to be an active principle. And it is about now taking things a step forward. I think that in a lot of ways, we're already seeing things open up um, collectively in terms of society starting to open up and engage more and more. And we are likely going to see a greater motivation to accelerate that process. And in a practical sense, see the ability to accelerate that process that much more as we navigate towards the very end of this week. But this zero degree, because both of these planets are at zero degrees of the respective signs that they are moving through right now. It is going to be at zero degrees of Aquarius that Jupiter is going to meet Saturn at the end of the year, at the winter solstice. So of course these planets are meeting in Aquarius, not at zero degrees of Capricorn, which is the solstice point. They are one sign beyond that. They are at zero degrees of Aquarius. And this is where Mars had met Saturn. And I think that this is going to be very powerful. It's going to allow us to see the events of late March differently. It's going to allow a spirit of hope and healing. But in many ways, it is the actions we take now that will build self-respect that allow us to utilize the opportunities of what takes place towards the end of the year that much more fully. It is a phenomenal time, a powerful time as part of a very powerful year that ultimately is setting us up for even larger transitions coming up as we navigate further into this decade. But bringing it back to this week, there is a lot of power to be found in responsibility. And remember, freedom with a week like this comes through responsibility, not from responsibility. What I love about this week for us, my goodness, there's so much here. I love the spirit of the solstice and of the eclipse. I love that it promises us a whole new way of considering things. And most of all, considering what brand new starts we can have. We've had this divine reset take place in so many ways because we have had to slow down across the world. The planet has had a very needed reset and a lot of us have been encouraged to approach our lives with greater consciousness. Eclipses are about consciousness. They're about aligning with a higher, more loving vision for our lives collectively and personally as well.
and where it is that we need to redefine the past so that it can empower our future ahead, those changes will come about very quickly now, as will the clarity and understanding. You add to this these phenomenal shifts taking place of Neptune, of Venus direct, right? Allowing us to feel like on a heart level, we can love that much more fully, that we can go forward and go out into the world with greater love. And of course, with Saturn groundedness as well. Well, it does tell me that this is a week where a whole lot of us are going to feel that things have started to change and for the better. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know all the wonderful stuff playing out this week for you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have books, right? Prayers to the Sky, The Body and the Cosmos. Thank you so much for your continued interest in them. Uh, it was so much fun to write them. The Body and the Cosmos is uh, me taking Plato's ideas that he presents in Timaeus and applying it to an astrological sky. Plus there's a bunch of meditations in there as well. And prayers to the sky is what I call astrological magic light. It introduces you to some concepts of astrological magic as well as considering some of the origin myths and prayers to the planets. And my next book is The Universe is Wise and Loving. That is right around the corner. Uh, it is going to launch August 22nd, and I will let you know when pre-orders are up. So that is gonna be a lot of fun as well. Synchronicity University is on swing. It is on the way. It is happening right now. We had our first class earlier today. Thank you so much to everybody who joined me and everybody who's registered. Uh, we truly had a lot of fun talking about Uranus, signs and houses. We went through all of the signs and houses and we explored some of the myth and understanding of Uranus also. Now it is going to be next week that we do Uranus part two which has to do with Uranus in aspect to planets in the astrology chart. So I think that's gonna be a lot of fun as well. You can download Uranus through signs and houses now, and you can still sign up for classes coming up ahead, individual classes as part of Synchronicity University Summer School for 2020. I look forward to meeting you in class. And finally, you can get my interpretation of your unique birth chart, thanks to my partnership with Cosmogram. Uh, you go online to Cosmogram using the link in the description below. You enter your birth data, you make your payment, and within hours, you will get a PDF uh, interpretation of your natal chart where I examine and look at the different aspects in your chart and what it means. It was truly a labor of love, uh, putting together all of the possible combinations, planetary combinations that can take place. And you add to this the incredible software that Cosmogram brings that allows us to uh, utilize it or allows us to ultimately generate this report for you and give you something that I hope that you will cherish for a very long time to come. So if it is that you would like my take on your unique birth chart, use the link in the description below. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. We are living in such phenomenal and special times. I know that we have so much to look forward to, so much coming up ahead. And I look forward to continuing to walk this journey with you. And from me to you, thank you. Thank you for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.